How do you deal with reflections in glass, oven doors, car windows when you're filming video? Heck, sometimes you even see yourself in the camera. We'll show you two great ways to deal with reflections. Discovering unforeseen issues on set is a part of filmmaking. Discovering unforeseen issues on set is a part of filmmaking and how you solve that problem can make or break your timeline and your shot. It makes sense when you think about it as we're recording everything seen through the ever expanding angle of the lens. So one thing, reflections can really compound that problem when it allows us to see outside of that viewpoint. A subscriber recently asked us how to deal with reflections in his oven door. He's trying to film something cooking in his oven. And well, glass reflects. One way is to block the actual reflection. We could do this with a flag or with a black cloth material on set that's usually duvetyn. Here I'll hang the duve on a grip arm rigged horizontally. I'll use spring clamps and I'll twist them back or put black paper tape on them so that they don't also cause reflections. So that means we get to talk about angle of incidence and angle of reflectance. It may sound complicated, but it's not. Basically, the angle of light hits a surface, it reflects off of it at the same angle. If you draw a line perpendicular to the surface at the point of the reflection, you'll see how the angle stays the same. Now transfer that to a vertical reflective surface and you see how that helps you determine what is causing the reflection or hotspot. So when you think about it, it's pretty straightforward, right? I mean, the angles are the same. Well, yeah, that's if you and the reflective surface are both vertical at the same height to each other, you know, the same plane. But what if it's twisted and angled? Well, now what? It just got complicated. And all I can say is, welcome to the world of filmmaking. And I don't mean to be facetious, I just can't count how many times I've been on set where there's been a reflection or a hot spot, uh, sometimes off of multiple surfaces that we're trying to uh, chase down and black it out. It just happened to Manu and I on our Syria commercial, there was a hot spot on the Syria bowl for an insert, and it took us a little while to figure out where in the world that light and reflection were coming from. There's no easy answer, it just eventually boils down to trial and error and trying to figure out that angle if you can. Trial and error. But what if there is no angle because you're looking directly at the surface, and you can see yourself and the camera? Now what do you do? In that case, you need to black yourself out. Drape duvetyn on either side of the camera or cut a hole in black show card for just the lens to peep through. If the black is causing unwanted negative fill, use a white fabric or the white side of the show card. They do this all the time in the still world for those close-up product shots. Okay, these are great, but a little bit of a pain, a little bit of work, Sure would be nice if there was something a little bit easier. Well, there is. It's method number two. Uh, it works like magic, though it's science. Uh, doesn't work in all situations and has a few trade-offs. I introduce to you the polarizer. What does it do? It blocks out polarized light. What is polarized light? First, what's unpolarized? The light from the sun or light sources are unpolarized. That is, they oscillate in a variety of directions. Polarized light is light vibrating in only one direction, on one plane. And it can happen naturally when light reflects off of a non-metallic surface. And can be more pronounced depending on the angle that it hits and reflects off of that surface. Think of a polarizing filter as a series of very fine parallel slits that only let a light wave oscillating in a certain direction through the slit. As you spin the polarizer, you're spinning the direction of the slits and changing which light waves you let through or, in our case, 
keep out. For even more detail, uh, Eric Mickelson has a great video on YouTube. Uh, it gets pretty deep, very interesting, link below. Just know that as you spin the polarizer, depending on the situation, you will block some of the light reflecting off that surface and therefore darkening that surface. Here's a glass door, a glass picture frame, a car windshield. But notice, because it's curved, it doesn't get all the reflections. I would need to choose which one to leave in, which is fine, as it's part of the aesthetic of an angled car windshield. It's always just a little bit of the sky reflecting in it. When we think of reflections, we think of glass and shiny surfaces. But everything reflects light to some degree, otherwise we wouldn't be able to see it or record it, right? I mean, you know that, right? This means using a polarizer on other things could have an interesting effect on the contrast of your image. Let's go outside and find out. Here's blue sky, which is our atmosphere reflecting sunlight. Nice, but it's also a bit bright. Let's twist the polarizer and I can use whatever level of darkening I want. A little or a lot. Now the rule out there is that you need to use a polarizer on the sky at 90 degrees to the sun, which is kind of not totally true. Here I'm using it at 90 degrees to the sun, now 180 degrees to the sun. You can see it still works, but I have to readjust the polarizer for each, meaning painting the camera would not work. That's one of the trade-offs. Where else can we use it? Shiny green leaves reflect light, right? Get rid of the shine, we've now lowered the contrast of our shot by getting rid of those bright highlights and we have a very different and beautiful shot. This may sound crazy, but asphalt also reflects light. Works as long as you're at an angle to its surface. Again, we're lowering the contrast. Sometimes instead of getting rid of window reflections, it affects the contrast of what's reflected in it. Again, more interesting choices. Now the other trade-off, polarizers eat up some light, a stop or higher. When you think about it, you're actually blocking light that's coming in, right? So you're gonna lose some exposure. Not a problem outside on a bright sunny day, but inside, that can be a bit of a problem. So for that oven shot, it probably means you might need to add some additional light, probably from the camera, right? Because anywhere else, you, you're going to run into the problem of probably getting a reflection. One other trick with a polarizer, it's not a reflective surface, but it's polarized light or LED monitors. If you have LED monitors in a shot, a bar or wherever, where you need to uh, black them out, polarizer, twist that sucker, boom. And it works because polarizers have polarized material uh, sheets in them uh, to help them work. Polarizers are not that expensive and great to have in your kit, but they can get costly if you have to get one for every lens that you have. So if you don't have one, recommend at least getting one for your primary lens and going out and shooting tests. There's really no one right way to use them. It matters on whether you want to add contrast to your shot like we're doing by darkening the sky or lowering the contrast by taking those hot spots on the leaves or the bright spots on the asphalt down. Even cars with their multiple surfaces can start to look kind of interesting when you use a polarizer on them. And it's really a matter of you playing around, testing, and choosing what fits the shot that you want to make. So bottom line, whether you're blocking it out with duvetine or a flag or using a polarizer, they're tools that are helping you manage the contrast, what you see or don't see in your shot. Thanks for watching. Check out pullmyfocus.tv for the companion articles that go along with uh, our each video. And happy shooting. <laughs>